again, glad to have you back. In the past I've talked a little bit about dynamics and I've mentioned motion diagrams and I want to do a, a more uh, involved example of motion diagrams today. Now motion diagrams are a graphical way to keep track of what's going on with a moving body and I'll show you here as we go along. They're mathematically identical to a load shear moment diagram. So if you've seen a load shear moment diagram before this will look very familiar. Conversely, if you learn how to do this, what I'm about to show you, when you finally do see load shear moment diagrams, it'll look very familiar and it'll be easier for you. So let's say I've got a little cart here, okay? Maybe a little race car, I don't know. Some, something moving along, real, real high tech, huh? And it's undergoing acceleration that changes with time, okay? So I'm going to put time over here and that'll be in seconds. And uh, let's see, that's acceleration. And that's going to be in meters per second squared. Okay, always track your units here. Now let's say my little cart undergoes acceleration of two meters per second squared for five seconds. Okay, so that's five seconds, and the height there is two, okay, meters per second squared. And then for two seconds, it just coasts, no acceleration at all. So I'll go out here about two. And then I decelerate, or it decelerates, at minus one. So it decelerates at one meter per second squared, and it does that for five seconds. So that right there is five, that's seven, and that'll be 12. So the total run is 12 seconds. Okay? If the first step here is to draw acceleration, the next step here is to draw velocity. And that's going to be in meters per second. Okay? So the area here is going to equal the height down here. And the height here is going to equal the slope down there. So as soon as we start talking about areas and slopes and heights, you know we're talking derivatives and integrals. So let's draw one more axis here. Again, time. Now, you can, the nice thing about doing this graphically, one of the nice things, is you can look at this and say, you know, that's not symmetric about that point. There's more area over here than there is over there. Since you spend, there's more acceleration on this side than that side, this box is just bigger than that one. you got to think, you know, at the end of this, I'll bet velocity isn't zero. I bet there's not enough deceleration to account for the acceleration. And even at the end of 12 seconds, I bet my car will still be moving. And you don't have to crunch any numbers. You just look at it and go, yeah, it looks about right. So if you're doing this on graph paper and you do everything to scale, you, this is a really good check to be sure you get the right answer just by drawing everything to scale and using your eyeballs. All right? Never give up a chance to check your work, and this is a great way to do that. All right, so the area here is just base times height. So it's 5 times 2, that's 10. 10 watts. Well, 10 meters per second squared times seconds. Meters per second squared times seconds is meters per second. Great, that's velocity. So there's meters per second, and that means, I'll carry, extend this down. All right, let's see if I can do this here. Oh, look at that, that's good. All right, that means that height here is going to be 10, 10 meters per second velocity at that point. And the slope here is going to be the height there. So the slope here has to be 2. Now, what's going on at the point, those, those two seconds when the card is coasting? Well, there's no acceleration or deceleration. The height here is equal to the slope there. Well, the height there is 0, so the slope there must be 0. So let's just draw that little box in there and extend that down. And last thing, the, the area here is going to equal the change in height there. Well, the area here is 5 seconds times minus 1, so the area is going to be minus 5 meters per second. Again, meters per second squared times seconds gives me meters per second. So let's do that. I'll decrease 5. That means the height here at the end is still 5. So the card is still moving at 5 meters per second at the end of the run here. All right. Last one, let's draw position. And of course, the units on that are in meters. We're going to do the exact same thing. The, the logic that got us from here to here is exactly the same as the logic that gets us from here to here. So the process is the same. So let's carry my little time divisions down here. All right, so the area here must equal the height there. The area is going to be meters per second times seconds, well that's going to be meters. Good. That's what that, the, the, the correct unit there. Well what's the area of a rectangle? It's, or a triangle? It's one half bh. So one half times five times ten. Alright. 
So that must be 25, right? So that's 25 watts. That's 25 meters. So let's draw this like that. Oh, is that right? I bet that's not. The height here equals the slope there. So we know that's not a straight line. Okay. The slope starts at zero and goes to some positive number. So let's draw a crooked line or a curve here. That looks pretty good. And the height there must equal 25. Now I'm going to run out of room here if I'm not careful. I'm, I'm going to have a tough time doing this to scale. All right. Now the, the slope here, I'm sorry, the height here is constant, so the slope here is constant. All right. So what's the change in velocity? The change in velocity equals that area. So we call that area 1, area 2. Well, that's a rectangle, so that's just base times height. All right, so base is 2 and height is 10. So the change in height is going to be 20. And I apologize if this isn't quite right. There's 20 right there. Okay, so that is now 45. So I've now gone 45 meters. And since my velocity doesn't go to zero, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to wind up here with a positive slope. I'm still going to be moving here. Well, let's just sketch this in. We know that my, the height here equals the slope there. Well, the height here is a positive number that gets smaller but still positive. And since it's the same height here as it is right there on, at the, that point, that means the slope right there has got to be the same. And it'll go like that. That's not quite to scale here, but you get the idea. Positive slope, a less positive slope. So what's the area over here? Well, there's two. There's, I'm going to divide it in two here. The area down there is base, which is 5 seconds times 5 meters per second. So the area down here, maybe A3, is 25. The area of that triangle is 1 half BH. The base is 5. The height is now what? 5, right? So the area of this is 5 times 5 times a half, which is going to be 12 and a half. Oh boy, can I fit that in there? Okay, so the total height, the total change in height here is now 25 plus 12 and a half. So the total change in height, which means the total change in position down here, is 37.5. Okay, now to find out that's 37.5 from there to there. So to find out the total change in position, all I've got to do is add up that height, that height, and that height. Well, 45 plus 37.5 ought to be 82.5 meters. So from this, I know that my final velocity is 5 meters per second. It's still moving at the end of the run. And my final position is 85 meters per second. Again, this is called a motion diagram, and mathematically, it's identical to a load shear moment diagram. If I were drawing load shear moment, this would be load, that would be shear, that would be moment. Hope this helps, and I'll talk to you next time.